Tammy. Whoa, good catch. Come on. Come on, come on. What? More stuff for us? More stuff, yeah. I got it. Come here. Here we go. She doesn't do anything. She can sit here with me. Come on, best sales marketing tool that's ever been. Who doesn't, you know, I, I, I can be the worst schmuck on earth, but uh, you put a dog on my lap and everybody likes you. <laughs> How old? She's four. Yeah. <laughs> She's just getting going. Okay, this is the time to answer. Uh, well, we'll answer. Well, maybe we'll. This is the time to ask questions on anything. Uh, Related to anything. We don't care. No, any subject at all. Any subject at all. So let's start with you. What's your question? <laughs> you gotta give me some time to think about it. Uh, that never happened in the past. <laughs> in a minute. In a minute? Yes, ma'am. This is Anita. Anita has the floor. Okay. This okay, that's here. enough from Anita. <laughs> she here and comparing, you've got automatic. Um, things are going to tell you what the speed is to make the different types of ice cream. How would I use this if I'm going manual? Because you don't have those same things. Now, didn't you work for two days, these past two days, on a machine that doesn't have, it's totally a manual machine? Didn't you work for two days I in that? I did, but it was a lot bigger than this. Same thing, same process. The main, uh, the main thing is the size of the machine. It's only three quarts, and so the cost, uh, cost to buy it is a lot less. Uh, it's going to make super premium gelato and Italian ice. That's all? Yeah. It won't do homemade and it won't do custard uh, because those are at the extreme ends of the spectrum. But the products that you want to get, a, a real high quality homemade ice cream, the Italian ices, uh, gelato if you want to do it, uh, this is the ideal machine for it. We, we picked one speed and said this is what it'll be. So uh, it'll work just fine for you. Now you said it won't make custard. Isn't custard a, a, a product of the ingredients? No, it's all, well, yes, it's got, it's 10% fat, uh, rarely 12. Egg yolks. And it's got, uh, I think it's 3.5% egg yolk by volume. Right, but it's a slower speed. It's a, it, and it's a, yeah, it's a very, very slow speed. So you're putting almost no air in it. So it's a very dense vanilla ice cream. I tell people who have never had frozen custard, because the only real frozen custard uh, comes out of, uh, uh, you know, started in Wisconsin. If you've never had frozen custard, buy some haagen put it into a dish, and swirl it like a little kid until it gets all soft and sticky and pulley. That's custard. That's, that's what you're eating. And it's a delicious product, but it's a limited market, mainly limited by its name. Uh, most of the country goes, oh, custard, that's the stuff mom used to put into little glass jars and serve Except us for dessert. if you're in St. Louis, then, they then know you what can it is. see Ted Drew's. Anybody know about Ted Drew's? Frozen custard. Uh, boy, he and, as, and as Culver's expands, more and more people are seeing what cu custard is. So right. it's never going to be a huge market because it's... Uh, it's um, uh, what you call in, in TV uh, narrow casting. Uh, you're picking a very tight, limited market. They're, they're, they're fanatically, uh, fanatic fans, but there aren't enough of them. Uh, with homemade ice cream like Jeff's making, you've got the entire world open to you. Uh, with Italian ice, I've got uh, a product that I can serve on a hot day anywhere in any economic uh, background and sell it and make a profit. I can sell it at the Florida State Fair for $6 and make giant profits. Uh, I, I can sell it in a developing country for 50 cents and I'm still making a 40, 47 cents profit. So it's, it's, a, it's got a wide range of appeal to it being uh, Italian ice. And there is a third product in there. You have Italian ices, water, sugar, and flavor, and you have ice cream with ice cream. Can I go here? Sure. And you have ice cream with uh, the bladders that we use, the ice cream mix, and your ingredients. Mm -hmm. There is a middle ground. The middle ground, in my world, it was called cream ice, but it's also sherbet. Uh, if, but if you open up a store that sells <laughs> sherbet, nobody's going to come there because right. the perceived value isn't there. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, down south runs a store called Cecily's Gourmet Italian Ices. They're not Italian ices. All he sells is cream ice. But he knows if he put cream ice on the window, 
you're not going to have customer one. Who's going to walk into a store that says Cecily's cream ice? It, you know, no offense, but it's not going to work. And same thing with Italian ice. For everything except ice cream, there is some education of the public, right? Yeah. Uh, and also depending on where you are. If you're in the, the lower mountains of Utah and you open up a place Italian ices, I don't think you're going to make it. They don't know what Italian ices are. It's pretty much a northeast thing or east coast. Well, thing. since we moved down here, it's it's east really coast, gotten right. it's, no, it's really spread across the south, yeah, all the way to California. Not that major. A lot of people still don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sell, they, people say, "I never had this before," and they love it. Once they try it, right. they have to try it. Right. It's right. crazy. It's all from food. We call it water ice. Water, 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 water ice. Water ice. Yeah. That's because you're from Philadelphia. Yeah. See, and also you open up a store that says water ice. The perceived value. They're not going to get five. Dollars for like, a couple oh, of that. Water, water, water ice, water ice right. right? That's what they say too. So like, that's why this guy called it gourmet Italian ice. Right. It's not Italian ice. I, so I, the name I have right. started the uh, the background work of uh, setting up another corporation uh, down in South Florida, and I've trademarked the name uh, Stefano's Brooklyn Italian Ice, yeah. and the tagline that I've trademarked is "Ice the way you remember it." Right. And it's going to be really high quality Italian ices. I'm going to sell it wholesale only. Uh, because unlike the ice cream, there's a unique market for it. If you want to have Italian ice in your pizza parlor uh, in Fort Lauderdale, you've got to ship it down from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, or Pennsylvania. That's the only source, and you've got to buy a thousand dollar minimum order. I'm going to have it locally, and we're going to deliver it locally, and it's going to make a killing. Right. Because I, I'm, I'm going to walk the walk. I've been talking about making a uh, fortune for people selling Italian ice for years, and now I'm going to uh, do it for my relatives, I put them in charge of it. enough money already, it's like, we stop. It's not that. <laughs> it's, it's putting people into business. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm doing... just joking, man. Uh, no, but, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> when, when someone tells you, I'm doing okay, that, yeah. that's a tip-off. But, you know, the, the reason I want to do it and the reason I like doing it is, and all of you who go into Italian ice, if you have just a push cart, uh, someone's gonna, people are going to come up to you all day long and they're going to say, I wish I could do this. And you're going to, the first lie you're going to tell them is, well, you can't. These recipes came from my great, great grandfather from Genoa, Italy, not some white Presbyterian from New Rochelle, New York. Um, so that's the first lie. The second lie is the truth. Well, you can't do this. It's a minimum order of $1,000. $1,000 worth of ice is going to take up half this room, so you have to get freezer space. And the third answer, which is the right one, is you say to that person, I'll tell you what, I'll sell you my ice. Uh, here's, here's some literature on push carts, three different companies. You go buy a push cart, you call me on Tuesday, tell me how many lemon, cherry, grape, mango you want, and you can pick it up on Friday. Cash only, no credit cards, no open accounts, no broken promises. You have to pick it up so that I'm not wholesale, I'm retail. And you go sell it in your push cart and you, supply, you support your family. So I tell this to a guy, and, and he comes back a year later, and he says, oh, man, the ices are doing so great. I'm going to buy 10 push carts this year. And, you know, being a snide New Yorker, I said, oh, so I see you're going out of the ices business, and you're going into the push cart repair business. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you're, you're going to spend all your time repairing 10 push carts. Why don't you do my idea, and now you're supporting 10 families who are going out on their own and buying their own ices from you. You're the supplier. They don't have to ship it down and pay 80 bucks a tub because of shipping. They don't have to buy a $1,000 minimum order. They can buy four tubs for all I care. And we'll freeze it down to 10 below. We'll bring your igloo coolers. We'll put in your igloo cooler. You drive it 20 miles to your igloo cooler, and you're in business. I'm glad you said that. Let me ask you this, man. So if you're freezing it down at 10 minus 10 degrees, you know where you, you're going to run into a problem at, right? Not yet. Once you sell it to somebody, you got to explain to them how to be able to unfreeze it the right way yeah. for dipping purposes. Because most people are going to mess it up by leaving it out too long. They'll only mess it up one day. Yeah. Yeah, you, but I mean, if it melts, what I'm saying is if they let it freeze, like unfreeze from temperature to bring it to the temperature where they can dip it, that's where most people go wrong. Well, it's only, not too, only the first time. Yeah, because what you do is you take a $500 chest freezer like the one over in the side of the room and you turn it up to 10 degrees. And with my ice being all fresh and no chemicals, I'm going to scoop at 16. So for the next day and a half, I'm going from 10 below to plus uh, 10 or 12, 
and when I'm ready to take it out, it'll it'll be perfect. So you just put you just take it and leave it in there and let it thaw out that way. Like, yeah. You ever? How long does it take to do that? Uh, anywhere from over, depending on the temperature, anywhere from overnight yeah. to 24 hours. Yeah. Didn't you ever have people over for dinner and you pull out the ice cream and you leave it on the counter? And women, ladies, did you ever why? wonder why your uh, spouse who won't do a thing in the kitchen is so happy to scoop the ice cream because we know it's all melted around the edges and hardcore in the center we're eating all the edges uh, while we're scooping the center for the guests we're getting a double duty of ice cream we're very conniving yeah, I've seen some it's, people do that right and then it melts from the bottom then they left with the ice at the top so then it, the flavor drops the sugar it's, it's, it's all about drops. the temperature uh, whatever your scooping temperature is Take it to within yeah, five I, to eight I know degrees. what you mean. Sometimes when I was a kid, you would buy the little cups in the in the grocery store, supermarket, in the frozen area. And when you scraped it, what did you really want? The, the bottom. Of the bottom. Yeah, the bottom. Uh, but yeah, but, the bottom. but that's, that problem is because of trucking it down from Correct. New Jersey. Correct. Because the trucker is carrying uh, Little Jimmy's Italian ice. He's also carrying DiGiorno pizzas and Publix green beans or something like that. So they're all coming down the Jersey Turnpike frozen. He's worried about his uh, 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 diesel bill, so he turns off the reefer for three hours. The green beans melt a little bit. The DiGiorno pizza melts a little bit. Who, who cares? They'll refreeze and they'll but be back Marino's to where they were. But the, where the ices, the flavor bleeds to the bottom of the camp. Right. So it's just a matter, we call it tempering. And if you do it in your home with your ice cream or your ices, you just put it in the refrigerator for an hour, hour and a half before you want to serve it, and it'll all warm up together. It'll all temper up together. In our store, uh, we open at 6, and the girls come in at 5. And what's the first thing the girls do? They put the hard flavors on the counter for 15 minutes. Tempers, otherwise they couldn't scoop it. Otherwise, they'd break their arm. They couldn't scoop it. Yeah. And I've been back there, and I can't scoop so it. It's it too hard. It so it tempers for 15, yeah. 20 minutes, and it then won't. they put it back. And what see, keeps that, it... The ice cream is different, I think, than the time. No, the ices, won't, the ices won't separate either. They have probably separated before you got them. Or they were mistreated uh, in, in transport. You know, your, your employee just told you that he made the delivery over to uh, Louis Italian Ice. He didn't tell you that he stopped off for an hour right. to visit his girlfriend and left everything <laughs> warming up. And then they put in Louis's freezer. Louis didn't look. He's too busy getting pies ready for uh, tonight for pizzas. And uh, then he finds out a day later, yeah, the flavors drop to the bottom of the can. Yeah, there's no doubt that any of the products, any frozen dessert could be mistreated. Right. And the result, just like the, the frost on top, you know, if you, you've eaten that, it doesn't taste very good. You've got frost and good ice cream. So anything can happen. That's why you have to focus on your product and take you care of it. Burton, your buckets, what you do? You, just, you don't get them or do you get them? So get what? The little frost that sits you No, I don't get them. Yeah. The secret yeah, to why I don't get them? Yeah. You want to know the secret to why I don't get them? It's fresh. I keep my ice cream in one gallon oh. container. Oh, yeah. Keep them open. One Those are these containers that you saw us working with today. Every batch, I get six to seven one-gallon containers, and we put them in our freezers that way. The surface area is very limited. A tub of three gallons is triple the surface area, and the tops don't snap on, uh, which is another reason why your dipping cabinets with 16 open tubs in your ice cream store, 16 tubs that are open, they open the, the top, and the air is running across 16 open tubs, because they don't have covers on them. They want you to see how pretty they look. So the air runs across there. They do that 100 times in a shift, in a day. That means that ice cream is subject to 100 rushes of air every day. You have to get ice crystals. It has to uh, impede the integrity of the ice cream. You're not going to get what you made. Simple solution for that is behind me. There's a small dipping cabinet behind me, and that's the what we call the old-fashioned floppy door cabinet. I'm sure they've got a real name. And those are fine. I call it the floppy door cabinet because they're not exposed to all the sun and every and this and all that glass area. I don't use the visual display cabinets. I like those. They hold their temperature better. They cost less. 
Uh, and, but you and go into the, every the ice cream store in the world. Not mine anymore. And, okay. we, we dropped it because the other problem we had is somebody in their infinite wisdom, which is a joke, uh, decided, let's give a free sample. And uh -huh. you wouldn't believe the, the old people. They come in and they get a sample because they found out you can get a sample. Well, let me try the mint chip. Oh, let me try the blueberry. Oh, let me try the raspberry. They're holding up the line, which is which is the kiss of death. And then they're so full they walk out. You just want to get. Yeah. So if you want a sample, buy a half pint. <laughs> Oh, it's his, please no <laughs> it's his retirement give a committee car calling. <laughs> and it's not the guy who's asking for samples, it's the next person. Right. Yeah. Because now they're saying, Well, screw that. I want to try the rum right. and I want to try the chocolate chip. I wanna right. and then the person the after them. Board. And before you know it, the people are online for twenty minutes, they're not happy. We stop giving out samples, Yeah, we don't give out samples. In fact, people ask me why. What about pan ice cream, Thai pan ice cream, where you put the, the dairy on there and you scrape it? You know, it's kind of fun to watch. Or the uh, night liquid nitrogen ice cream. Uh, they're both doomed to failure and they already have. And the reason is, if you watch a, a YouTube video on them, it takes about six and a half minutes to serve one customer. Six and a half minutes times ten customers, that's over an hour. And I'm not waiting an hour for anything. Do they charge more for that? I don't know. Because basically that's what it is. But, it, sure. but it didn't, it, it's a nice show once, yeah. but then it, it's, it's doomed to failure because once you've seen it, you're not going to wait an hour. Yeah. And the nitrogen in Houston, those nitrogen stores, what, seven ninety five for a small one, mm. and then it goes up to over almost 12 bucks for a large one. And then and then people were like waiting in line. They, they, they go up there, they order, they take their money, and then they go sit out. And then you're going to have to go wait for your ice cream. And hope people. they don't lose you. And, and if you Google that nitrogen ice cream, if you Google that information, because Mary Googled that, and uh, there's so many people out there that's gotten sick and gotten hurt from eating that because yeah. of, because if that nitrogen actually gets in the ice cream, or sometimes it does, and you eat it, it can expand in your lungs and hurt you. So there we go. that's that's a bad deal. Bad deal. Okay, two quick shameless plugs. Come, Sammy. <laughs> shameless plugs. We shameless plug shameless. number one. one you no, know, didn't he run an? I got one question. I'm trying to make a living here, buddy. <laughs> but shameless <laughs> plug. He used to run an Irish bar in Manhattan. <laughs> what what dyes do you use in your tiny eyes? Do you use dyes? Dyes? Color color dyes. I do not. But if I did, oh, I would use Green Mountain flavors because they're all natural. Um, but I try not to use dyes. I'd rather explain to people why my product is pale pink instead of bright red. And if you ask a millennial, they already know it. They look at that and they say, oh, okay, that's good. I don't see that it's Another bright red. Another reason against those 16 tub plastic top cases, homemade ice cream is basically Bland. beige. Yeah. Right. It's basically beige, except for the chocolate, beige. Right. So it's not visually appealing. Right. What they do is they add colors to it so that in, when you look at the 16 tubs, oh, green pistachio and bright red cherry and Superman has three colors and on and on. Right. Ours isn't like that unless we add fake colors, which I don't want to do. And millennials are always asking us, asking us for if we're going to have uh, dairy-free ice cream. Well, the, the, uh, the, the Italian ices are all dairy-free. It's right? not the same. Yeah. It's not the same at all. Let me. But it's not ice cream, but it's it, it's a frozen dessert. Oh, it so is. This is the greatest trend <laughs> that has ever come along. And and I've been around long enough that I've been through a lot of. I'm younger than Jeff, but I've been around longer. Uh, I've been through a lot of fads in my You're life. That time. much younger. Than <laughs> <laughs> that much younger. I've been through a whole lot of fads, and this stuff is a trend. What it is, is uh, I have four millennial children. They're all uh, very well doing in business. And um, uh, if they come for Christmas dinner, I'll serve them haagen -Dazs or Ben and Jerry because they grew up on it. It's what we, we put them in business. But in their own refrigerator or their own freezers in, in uh, Denver and New York, uh, they're going to not have dairy ice cream. For some reason, the millennials have decided they don't like dairy. I spoke to one once and then decided not to talk to him anymore because they said they thought it was uh, just awful that uh, people were, you know, squeezing a cow every afternoon at four o'clock. And I said, you try going eight hours without going to the bathroom and see how you feel. Of course, that went over like a lead balloon. So I don't say that anymore. 
but they're not huge fans of dairy. So uh, I heard about uh, vegan ice cream, which is what we called it. And, and I repeat myself, but vegan sounds like an 87-year-old man who weighs 87 pounds, and you just want to buy him a good Ruth Chris steak because he looks so awful. Um, so vegan is not a good term to use. So, so millennials in Southern California came up with the term dairy-free ice cream. It's an illegal term. Briars can't use it because ice, the words ice cream, by defined by the federal government, is 10% fat or higher. But if you're a mom and pop store, even if you're 10 mom and pop stores, they're not going to come after you. If you're Briars, you have to call it dairy-free frozen dessert. Uh, but this is nothing more than coconut milk, uh, cream of coconut, <coughs> sugar, and that's it when I make it. I mix those together, I throw in my, uh, my mint extract, my uh, chips, and I've got dairy-free mint chip ice cream. Mine, after two years of practice, always comes out rock hard and crumbly and awful. Uh, Naomi Posner came up with this product that she uh, originally calls the name, uh, she pronounces it Mommies, which is Italian for mother, but it's spelled M-A-M-I-S. And she is also using the name now Froco for frozen coconut, F-R-O-C-O-N-U-T. Same stuff. And with this, I take a, a pound of powder and a quart of water, and I mix it together, and now I can make any dairy-free ice cream in the world. This, this is just fantastic. How much does that make? Uh, as much, I don't know how much this bag makes. So you but it's a soft serve? Yes, they make a soft serve version of it. Uh, but it's fantastic. <laughs> And Jeff started 20 minutes ago to tell you about his book and something <laughs> else. That's all right. Right. <laughs> so, homie ice cream with it's Well, it's well, not ice cream. Well, Soft serve is an ice cream. It's not ice cream. And yogurt's not ice cream. It's not ice cream, but it's very popular. Um, but it tastes like ice cream, right? Well, it doesn't yes, taste it tastes like my ice cream. No, no I'm serious. If you put, it tastes if you go like into a, a Golden Corral or whatever, and they have the machine there, it's pretty good when you're there because you've just had all that greasy, junky, starchy food. But if you sit down with a, a plate of that and then try real homemade ice cream, no, difference. different ball game. But you, but when people buy Italian ice, they don't really want dairy streets. No, but this is not this is not Italian ice. Dairy free is not Italian ice. Right. right. It may be dairy free, but, but it's not Italian ice. Like if you get a gelato, right? They want the Italian ice with the uh, ice cream, but a lot of people don't want the dairy. The parfait, the Ralph's yeah, parfait. Exactly. So that would be great. For them. I got to interrupt for a minute because we're going to have lunch soon. But Jeff and I were talking six, ten months ago. And, and quite frankly, we're very proud of the fact that we have put so many people into business since 2007. There are just thousands of people who are you know, making incomes for their family. And Jeff was lamenting that, unfortunately, because of the uh, fire codes here and the fact that they we're in the middle of absolutely nowhere in Florida, there's no amusement parks here, not everybody can get here. And, and nobody knows where Fruitland, Florida is, unless you're retired, Fruit Loops. Um, so Jeff went back and he came up with a brilliant idea of how to get to more people. So tell him. Oh, segue. Hello. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, what I can, yeah, I run a two-day course. You know that I've been doing that for years and years, and it's excellent. Uh, well, you can ask the people here who've been with me for two days what they thought of it, and and I didn't coach them, uh, but. All the people, I get 20 emails a day from people all over the world who can't be here because they can't take time off from work, the expense of the airfare, they can't bring their spouse, they want to bring their partners or their kids. It's just too expensive because I charge a lot for that course. So I thought, well, why not have a course in a box? So what I did was, hold on, what I did was, I had a videographer crew, a video crew, come and videotape all 20 hours of the class three times, which we do every other month. And uh, we went through all this video, through the editing, and I came up with a series of five DVDs. By the way, your tour video D DVD is in there. Oh, wonderful. It's in there. So you get... Uh, like 10 hours of instruction on video DVD with a notebook guiding you through everything. 
Uh, you even get a diploma that you finish the class. You get a hundred, here are the five DVDs. You get a hundred laminated recipe cards. Every recipe I've got. Uh, the adult recipes, the regular recipes, and it's all in there. And, uh, and uh, that's it, that's the class. Also, I sell my book. The, the one, the biggest thing I get, I, I talk to a lot of people, of course, all over the world, every day, and uh, they, the only thing they know about making ice cream is that they love eating it. And, and it doesn't matter if you're working as an auto mechanic or a brain surgeon, they just want a change of business, and they just think that ice cream would be great, but where do I start? So we, I send them to our videos, and, and that's helpful, but uh, it's, it's not enough. And uh, I, I, my personal opinion is any place that you can get knowledge from is just going to uh, be a tremendous help. I'm going to do a, a trade show in a couple of weeks uh, up in Charleston. And people, it's all ice cream only. And people will be coming to it. And I tell them, listen, if you talk to people and you only come up with one or two new ideas, you've more than paid for your trip. And, and something like this, I had a, uh, a young lady that I was dating uh, once and she thought she wanted to get into the ice cream business. And so she came to my course in New York, and afterwards she said, you know what, uh, I've got my captain's license, I, I can run a tugboat, I don't want to work as hard as an ice cream parlor is. And so her decision was not to go into the business. I said, you know what, that's one of the best decisions I've ever heard. Sometimes the best decision is not to do something. But if you want to learn, you of you watching this, if you want to learn about the ice cream business, uh, it tends to be so secretive, and that's what Jeff and I you know, fight against every day. It's so secretive, you can't get the answers that you want. Uh, this course is going to give it to you. And those of you who in the, in the audience today who have taken Jeff's course, I'm sure every one of you would agree that uh, Jeff is a, a fantastic teacher. He, he does a great job. And with that, we're going to break for lunch. So lunch is there. Come on up. We've got sodas. Uh, we'll bring in ice. And um, all those questions you wouldn't ask us while we're sitting here, I know you're going to run up and ask us. Here they come. Here they, here they come. The we might as well stand up. We're going to get us all the... Okay. Uh, thanks for that.